Hi guys, my name's Ellie, welcome to my channel, and um, I was trying to find a good place to film based on lighting, and this seems to be it, so we are sitting on the floor in my room in front of a weird door. We're doing uh, my eyeshadow palette collection today. I'm going to do it in sections just because, uh, just looking at my eyeshadows, there's a lot of them, and I don't want to do that and then also have to tackle everything else in my collection all at once because like single shadows are a lot smaller blushes a lot smaller highlighters lipsticks everything is very small compared to my eyeshadow palette collection because uh it was my first big addiction and it's still like one of my favorite things about makeup so let's get into it i have everything encasing me in like a like a little prison of makeup um, I'm gonna try and keep it by brands, if I can. I have a big pile over here of everything that's just like the only thing from one or two things from one brand. So I thought we'd start with the thing I have the most of, which is Urban Decay. And they were really my first high-end brand. So I did start out with the Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. Ta-da! Um, this was my first fancy makeup purchase. And... I use the crap out of it, and since Urban Decay is packed so tightly, you can't tell that I use that every day for months. And then my first big purchase after that, which I did a lot of research on, I was so proud of myself, was the Naked 3. Oh no. So yeah, there's that. Again, you can't tell that I use this, like, so often for a very long time, because that was my two big eyeshadow palettes. I did a whole bunch of research and I was like, okay, for pale people, cool undertones, blue eyes, this is going to be the best. And it was. It's great. I don't use it as much anymore, but I'm going to try and pull it back out. Oh, other thing we're doing with this video besides just showing off how much I hoard eyeshadow palettes is I would like you guys to comment down below and help me pick out some of my companion palettes this year. Uh, I have a lot of eyeshadows, a lot of mattes in my 18 and 2018, which I will link up top if I remember. And so I'm going to be grabbing companion palettes out of my collection to do kind of one month, one palette, uh, look at it at the beginning of the month, wear it to go with my other eyeshadows throughout the month, check in at the end with some of my favorite looks and how much usage I've managed to get on it. I'm going to be trying to keep it towards more metallic palettes because there's no point bringing in an all matte palette when I'm already panning a bunch of mattes. So. Feel free to comment down below if you see a palette that looks good, that you'd like to see me do something like that on. Oh, oh, things are sliding on my lap. We gotta move fast. So, I bought that, and that was my only Naked palette for a long time. And then recently I grabbed the Urban Decay Naked 1, which again, you've all seen, um, just to kind of test it out because this is a bunch of people's favorites. Uh, I did not get a ton of usage out of it yet. This is another one I want to try and like dig into and play with some more. And then this is a recent Christmas present from my mother, which we're in her room. Uh, this is the Naked Smoky. So I have not touched this yet. This is one of the ones I'm putting aside until I can really like focus in and get a good first impression on it. Even though they're discontinuing it, I, I want to do it my way because I'm weird. And then we get into, oh, oh I've got, I think one more, two more that are regular, and then we'll get into the discontinued and um, limited edition because limited edition had a big, big attachment to whether or not I bought something for a while because it was like, it's not going to be there. So this is the Moondust palette. It's gorgeous. It was a gift last year from my boyfriend, and I really like it. I do have a video. Um, doing a look that uses only this palette on my eyes, and it's awesome, so Another thing I'd be willing to pull out and use And then I believe they're still selling this. This is the Urban Decay After Dark palette Which is really pretty and as soon as I got over my annoyance About this not being a true sister palette to the electric and not a good replacement I did really like using this and I do need to pull it out some more so another strong contender for one of my one month, one palette companion palettes. Okay, now we're into the weirder stuff. So the first one I have is a small little Urban Decay Addictions. This was a point perk with Sephora. 
So it's got Fireball, which was my big draw, is I didn't have a single of Fireball or anything with it in it. So I really wanted to try out that Colt shade, and so I got this. Uh, Backfire's nice, and it's got just a cream and a dark brown matte. So cute little travel palette. Uh, I did also grab the Stefani palette, the Gwen Stefani palette. It's got some usage. It, It's very, very pretty. It's just more neutral than I wanted to do at the time. It was right when I was getting into colors, but I was like, this is a thing everybody's talked so much about, and it's so pretty, and it's on sale because they were moving it out. And it is really nice. I would like to use that some more. Oh, I'm running out of space. Ooh, ooh, this one I love. This is the Alice Through the Looking Glass palette. And it is so nice. I am obsessed with these colors. I got it, and this is one of the ones that I liked enough to put it back into my collection and not touch it because I was worried about using stuff up. Because it has so many pretty colors. And it's so nice. It's got nice pops, nice neutrals, got some transition colors, and they're really, really pretty. And at the time, I really liked just kind of standing at the mirror and just like doing my makeup with this nice big thing. The packaging, the rest of it's not the best, but I do really like this. Let's... Ooh, ooh, something I'm angry about. This is the electric palette. It's super pretty. It's amazing, and I am still and forever probably going to be, very upset that they discontinued this. It pops back up every once in a while. I think you can grab it sometimes at like Marshalls or Nordstrom Rack. But you need this in your collection if you don't have it yet. And Urban Decay needed this in their line. A lot of their other colors, as you can see, are really, really neutral. Super, super neutral. Even their pops are pretty fucking neutral. And I just think they need some colors if they're gonna brand themselves as this bright colorful ooh out there brand you need to actually have those colors and the formula in the electric palette is so good and the colors are really nice and oddly enough they really work well together to make looks that you can just make out of that palette and just... I'm very frustrated that they did that so we'll move on um, this is actually another limited edition palette this is the Urban Decay Vice LTD Reloaded palette let's see if I can get this yes uh, this was a gift, I believe, from my brother last Christmas. It's really pretty. I've used a bunch of the shades in here. I just haven't really dug into the palette itself and, like, used it alone. Because when you get a bunch of palettes at once at Christmas, it's hard to do that. But yeah, they're really pretty. They're a bit of the older formulation, so they could use some Fix Plus or some Sticky Base if you got it. This is another thing. I believe this was something that I purchased and then threw at my mom being like, hey, Give me this for Christmas. Just wrap it up and put your name on it. Uh, this is the Urban Decay Spectrum palette, which is just a whole bunch of really nice, um, cool toned shimmer shades. They are really pretty. I have used this quite a lot. Uh, I've got the slightest beginning of dupes in a co couple colors, but I like this a lot. Another good option to bring in for a companion palette. And then after that, their holiday last year, was the Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette, which I also, I, I think I like it, undecided. It's nice, when I first saw all the, like the promos and stuff, I thought it was gonna be all matte and it was gonna be my replacement for the fact that I missed out on the Mi Vida Loca palette. It is not. Um, most of these have shimmer of some kind. Like even Hatter has some like micro shimmer in it so it didn't do what I thought, but there's still a lot of really pretty shades in here. Like I really like Seas, um, Calavera's nice, uh, Jones and Goldmine are really nice to wear, work into looks. So I just need to use it more and get over my annoyance that it's not all matte. I wanted it to be all matte. And that is all of my Urban Decay, I believe. Unless we find something later. And I think I grabbed all my palettes. My stuff kind of ends up spread out between like stuff I put next to my filming, stuff that's um, back in my wardrobe to be held for later, which I will put in some footage probably at the end of um, how I keep all my stuff. And the other stuff is stuff I've put into my area for actual usage. So next, next thing that has the most, I think, I think by numbers is Too Faced. I have a lot of Too Faced. My first Too Faced was actually the Too Faced Chocolate Bar, 
which is really pretty. Does not show the usage, like, barely at all, because these are really densely packed. Um, I really, really like this when I first got it. I still use it sometimes. It's very good for travel. I really like to bring it and then just use one of the two transition shades and do like a medium, dark, shimmery, kind of smoky eye. And it works really well for that. And then after that, I got into the holiday stuff in 2016. So, we've got some things. I picked up the Chocolate Shop. And it's, it's really pretty. It's very nice. Uh, it's a lot of neutral shades. Which, you know, at the time I didn't have as many in my collection. So this is really nice. I did take this traveling when we did my cousin's wedding. So I did my looks out of there. Really liked it. And then feeding into the limited edition anxiety purchasing things. I grabbed the, I believe it's the coffee shop. Grand Hotel Cafe. And so they have, ooh, things are just falling in my lap. They've got three of these ones. They've got the peppermint mocha, gingerbread cookie, and oh no, oh no, eggnog latte. So it's a bunch of shadows and a blush and or bronzer, and they're all really nice. Um, some of the glittery shades do work better, again, over a sticky primer or a cream shadow base. But overall, I did like them. They're not like my favorite thing, but I don't hate when I use them. So there's that, and then last year right around Christmas I got into the peach craze with everybody else. I missed it the first time it came out, which is why I got so anxious when I grabbed the um, Through the Looking Glass palette from Urban Decay because when I was looking at it and being like, oh should I buy it, should I wait, the, the lady at Ulta, who was a smart person, um, pushed me over the edge by kind of saying, hey, you know, like it's really popular, we only have so many. And you know how Sweet Peach sold out because Sweet Peach had, Sweet Peach, had sold out, and they hadn't talked about when they were going to restock it yet. So everybody was going crazy, going all to Ulta's and Sephora's, trying to find, um, just some spares in the back to grab one because it was really, really popular. So, I didn't get it on the first round, and that did push me into buying the Alice Through the Looking Glass. So when they brought it back out, I picked it up, and it's nice. At the time, I was kind of disappointed because I was really expecting more of these tones throughout the palette because I hadn't grabbed it originally because I had seen so many different exposures on it that it looked I couldn't tell what was in the palette at all I really I couldn't tell if it was a dark one if it was a really washed out palette I couldn't tell how peachy it was because just everybody had their saturation set to different amounts and it looked really really different every time somebody used like a different youtuber used it so it was really weird, um, and when I got it, it's it's nice. It's much more neutral than I was expecting, which is technically, once I got over my annoyance, pretty nice. It's it's good. Um, again, I do like a lot of the shimmers work best over a cream shadow base, which I don't mind using, but it's it's a nice neutral palette with some peach, as opposed to like a really peachy palette, which is kind of how they were marketing it. And then I have one more little itty bitty palette. This is um, another one of those 500 point perks that I got from Sephora, mainly for salted caramel. If I ever pan the Too Faced chocolate bar, this salted caramel is going to go so fast. So I was really interested in getting a backup of that for when I try to do it, which now makes this a nice little neutral eyeshadow powder meh 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 thing. So. Oh, my legs are already going stiff. I'm sitting cross-legged on the floor and my knees hate that and my ankles hate that. So everything's just starting to go numb. And we're only two brands in. So next closest to me is Anastasia Beverly Hills. I have two palettes. So I have the, I believe it's World Trap Self-Made. Self-Made palette. This was a gift uh, two years ago from my parents. It's really, really nice. It was a, an interesting first dip into uh, Sassy Beverly Hills. These are a bit aggressive for a new makeup person. Just saying. Uh, they're really pretty. Uh, now that I have more shadows, these are a lot more neutral in my opinion. At the time I was like, oh my gosh, look at this orange, look at this mint. And like, they are pretty, but they're not as bright as I thought they were. 
in comparison to other shadows. So this is very nice. This is another one I want to get some usage on this year. Oof. We're just going to make a little leg space over there. There we go. And then the next one is Subculture, which I actually really, really like. I very much enjoy it. You can't see it very well, but I do have some dips going because I grabbed this and used it kind of as a, kind of as a go-to matte palette for December. So it's really nice. If you put a little extra time in and you don't try and do too many shadows layered together, like I know some people like to put like four or five shadows to layer in their crease. I don't do that. It just doesn't work well with how I do my shadows. So doing one to two in your crease, one in the outer corner, this palette works really well. You have to keep track of how much you're picking up. You just do. Um, and I'm fine putting the extra effort into it because these colors are gorgeous. And if I do put a little extra planning into it, it turns out beautiful. So that's my Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes. Next one is Kat Von D. They're literally all limited edition. She only has the shade and light as far as I know, as a consistent, permanent palette. I know she has the quads, but I think they're being phased out and I don't have any of those. And for some reason, I just haven't grabbed the shade and light yet. I've been using other stuff. I feel like limited edition always just kind of sets off my brain as more important to purchase before it goes away. Hence why I don't have more of the Naked palettes. I don't have the full line of chocolate bars yet because it just hasn't there's other limited edition things that have popped up that have been more important, in my opinion, to buy. So let's start with something you can probably still get. This is the Saint and Sinner palette. It's very pretty. I do have a little pan. The fact that they had two very, very similar matte cream shades annoyed me, so I decided to pan them out a bit and hopefully press something else in there that I would like. I think, I think eventually I will get over my annoyance with this palette. I just... I know everybody complains about the layout, and it's not even the layout so much as it's the color choice. So many of these shades are either redundant or don't work great. Like, Exorcism, really, really pretty, but pretty close on the eye to the blue shade, and this one doesn't lay down nicely. It just, it just didn't build up nicely for me. It turned out really weird and kind of grayish and not true to color. And it just, it just took so long to see it on my eye, and it was patchy blending out. I didn't like that. Um, Crucifix is kind of redundant with Revelation. I'd use them both in similar ways, and as again, Sanctuary doesn't need to be in there as well. She didn't put very many transition or crease shades, like you can kind of do these but they work better with the warm side, like you, you're not left with a lot to use on the cool side. It's just why she needed what are basically three silvers. This one and this one are kind of like, or no, these two. These two, you didn't need both of them. I just, I like a lot of colors individually, but looking at them on a whole in the palette annoys me. But I like them all individually enough to keep the palette for now. Oh, that was a lot of shade. Um, then working backwards, I got this monster metal matte palette from my friend Caitlin for my birthday, and it's really pretty. Uh, I haven't used it a lot just because I, the, the mattes were kind of intimidating for me, and the shimmers, it seemed like a really big thing to pull out for one or two shades. So I do want to dig into this some more this year and get some more usage, get some some dips going in these mattes and these shimmers, because it's a really nice formula. I just, I don't know why I never got fully comfortable with this palette. Partially, some of that was because I, I probably should have just bought it myself, because by the time I got it for my birthday, which, thank you, Caitlin, again, this is huge, and I like it, and it's so pretty. Um... A lot of the hype had gone down, so most people weren't talking about it or using it or were putting up as many tutorials. So it, I had to go find some old stuff in order to work around with it and play with it. But it is big and very pretty. I just need to use it more. And then two things I actually did use quite a bit. Uh, this is, ooh, Pastel Goth. This came out in the springtime? 
and it's this really, really pretty um, full matte pastel rainbow type palette. It's really, really nice. I like making, I make quite a few looks out of this actually. Um, honestly, when I'm picking this out, I'm probably making it just out of these shadows. I don't know why I didn't really use them with other things as much, but these by themselves make a lot of really fun, unique looks. I did a really nice Easter look out of them. It's really pretty. It's nice and handleable. A lot of the Kat Von D gets pretty crazy with her packaging. It's either weird shaped or it's huge or it's chunky, which is my next palette. This is the Serpentina palette, which I believe was not holiday, but fall limited edition something last year. This is really thick, which I don't mind on a whole, but it's just, it's less gorgeous. It has some really, really pretty jewel tone pa shades and this nice pigment. Um, this is how I found out that I liked green tone golds. Um, these guys are really, really nice, but they work best over cream shadow. Uh, these two mattes on the end, Venom and Blood Milk, they are really nice, but again, I need something a little lighter to blend them out. So this is really good to pull out in the fall and do some jewel tone looks and like, I want to call them smoky eyes, but they're not smoky if it's like a bright color kind of thing, if that makes sense. But kind of just blending one or two shades on the lid and having a really nice, colorful, jewel-toned eye. I like that. And then, ooh, let's do, let's do Tarte. I have Tarte over here. So, I did a whole video about how Tarte might be my favorite makeup brand. And then I really only have this many palettes from them, which is actually a lot of versatility. This was another one of my early purchases was the Tartlet. Not the Tartlet in Bloom, the original Tartlet. And I went super hard on this middle row of purples and just did this like the same eye over and over again. And it's really pretty and like you don't even really have dips in them. I've just partially worn through some of the name print. Like this, these are gonna last me forever. But they're really, really pretty. I do wanna get the Tartlet in Bloom eventually and the Tartlet Toasted because the I just, I really get along well with the Tarte, um, formula. And so that prompted me to get the Tartist Pro, which is so pretty. It's so pretty. It's got a nice neutral variety of colors and these really pretty shimmers. These are my first shimmers from Tarte. I really like them. Um, I particularly like how you can build up Trendy more slowly because I have a loose pigment in this one, this type of a shade, the kind of the blue-brown reddish teal thing duochrome that one and it was it's really pretty but it's not as easy to work with as a pressed shadow and this one is really nice uh, yeah i have some some beginning usage on these um the most i have is i have a good dip in the cream shade but yeah these are all really pretty this is this would be a great travel palette i just haven't traveled with it yet and then i have two other shadow things. This is Rainforest of the Sea Volume 3. Um, it's just a whole bunch of neutral shimmers and like one... Are you transition? Yeah, you're matte. Tiki's matte. Tiki looks matte. So it's a whole bunch of neutral golden-y type shimmer shades and one neutral shade. It's really pretty. Um, I've worn it a lot. I really, really like Malibu as kind of a, a medium smoky eye all over the lid type thing but they're really pretty. I like them a lot. Another thing I'm potentially going to pull out, um, I actually have a job that I'm starting on Tuesday, which I'll probably have started by then. So once I figure out their dress code and how bright I can go, I'll know whether or not I'm gonna be sticking to stuff like this to try and pan out a bunch of neutral shades, or if I can get a little, a little fancier with it, you know, a little more teal and peach. So then we have the Make Believe in Yourself palette, which if you can grab a hold of, I would. This is really, really pretty. Um, yeah, almost entirely shimmer. There's one matte transition shade, which you're really not going to use that much. You're going to pull this out with other palettes. You're going to use a matte palette with this almost every time. And they're just, they're really pretty. I really wish they would expand on these two shades. They're gorgeous. They're these lovely duochrome palette things. This is like a, like a taupey purple with a gold shift. And then this is kind of a peach with a gold, pink, purpley, gorgeous shift. And they have this nice highlighter, which I do like. It's um, kind of a orangey peach duochrome white thing. 
they're really pretty. They're very, very pretty, and they're very nice. So this will probably be in my companion palette rotation at some point. So that's all my Tarte palettes. I was kind of surprised I didn't have more. I thought I had more, and then I'm like, no, I just, I just want more. I haven't bought them, actually. <laughs> And then next biggest chunk of palettes is probably my Lorac palettes. So we'll do we'll do them in chronological order, maybe. Yeah, we'll do them in chronological order. So first thing I got was the Lorac Pro mattes from MMM two years ago. They're gorgeous. They were again very intense for a beginner makeup person. But I'm the one who asked for them, so I should have known better. These scared me a lot when I first got them, because they were very, very pigmented. Uh, they're the crease and outer corner of my look today. I'm panning this in my 18 in 2018. So pretty. I want to get. I want to use this all the way up and then get the Pro 1, because I feel like there's enough duplicates that I shouldn't have both, especially from the same company. So then, because I like this, and I heard so much about Lorac, I got this Riesling palette, which I'm not sure truly exists, if that makes sense. It pops up every once in a while on the Ulta website for sale, but you can't find it any other time. And I don't, I really don't understand how, because it always pops up on sale, but I never see it on sale for the regular price. But it's, it's really nice. It's some, some shimmery neutrals. I used this as an inner corner highlight for a long time, got a lot of compliments. Um, this might get rotated in. The weird thing is, some of the shades I feel like should be matte, and they're not. And then some of the ones that I think should be shimmer are not matte, or are, are matte. It's, it's weird, so I need to use this some more. It's just a lot of neutrals. Nice neutrals, really nice formula. I believe it is the Pro formula. That's my best guess. I think it works like the Pro formula for me. And then, my next Lorac purchase was huge, the Lorac Pro Mega Pro 3. This thing is gorgeous, super neutral, super useful. I feel like if I panned this, I could get a million warm neutral looks and use different shadows every day and not get bored. They're really, really pretty. I, I love Sequoia. Sequoia as like a, again, a shimmery, medium smoky eye. It's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, I would like to dig into this some more and get some usage on them. Use some more of the shimmer shades. Gorgeous, easily dirty, pretty. And then, I got the Lorac Pro too. Again, I was doing so much personal thought and research on which of the, like, collections I should use. Like, when I was looking at the chocolate bars, which of the chocolate bars I needed to get first. Which of the naked palettes I needed to get first. And I was like, okay, of the Lorac Pros, the regular line, because I had one, two, and three out at this time. I didn't, I had to look at which one I liked. And this one, this one was my choice. And I think it's a good choice. Um, it's, I feel like it's the most colorful of the pros, the regular pros, not the mega pros. And it's got some really gorgeous shades. I love chrome. Chrome is this nice, taupey, kind of burgundy duochrome. They're so pretty. Um, this is another good thing I would probably like to pull out at some point this year because it's just it's got so much nice shimmer and pigment that the first couple times I used it I was like oh my god like using navy is intense it is a lot but now that I have some more history with Lorac and usage I think I could get I think I could handle it I think it'll be fine and then I bought the Lorac oh what is it called It was like California Winters or something, California Dreaming Collection. I got this little palette, and I don't know if I ever got the video up, but I did um, like a whole deep review, and I have some good dips going in them. This is the regular formula, so it is different from the pro formula. Things to know if you're going into Lorac. Everybody talking about how great the pro formula is, they're talking about the pro formula, which is fine. The regular formula is still nice, but when they talk about insane pigment and like immediately foiled shimmer shades they're talking about pro formula so if you grab one of the unzipped palettes or one of the regular formula palettes you have to keep that in mind this is a lot easier to use it's a lot softer it blends out a lot more easily um the shimmer is all right honestly it's not the best um i don't like boots i really don't it's just 
packed navy blackish chunky glitter. Mm-mm. Uh, Kitty Cat's nice if you put in the effort, but it's kind of got some fallout. Uh, 65 and Sandcastle I did really like. They're shimmery, but it's it's just kind of on the edge of shimmery satin as opposed to um, like the Pro Formula shimmers are. <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying. The Pro Formula shimmers are like shimmer on the edge of foiled type thing, if that makes sense. Does that make Anyway, this is really nice. It's another one I'd like to pull out and do some more neutral, pretty lazy day looks with. So that is the entirety of my Lorac collection. I'm interested in some more of the Mega Pros. I don't know if I'm getting the Mega Pro 4 yet. I don't know. It's on sale and there's shades I would like, but I have a lot of makeup. Okay. Let's So now we're down to small amounts of palettes. So I have these Makeup Forever ones. I've got two, three, and four, which up until a couple weeks ago, I only had two, which I probably should grab one eventually too. So this is the first one, which I was starting my thing of getting bright colors first from a collection. I got this long time ago and it's so good. This is so good. You'd be surprised how much you can, how much usage you can really get out of this. Uh, it's got this really, really almost brown, black eggplant look. It's got a nice, nice bright purple and pink and blue. Um, one of those, you know, green to brown duo chromes. It's got a light pink, a silver, a light gold, a medium gold. There is so much to be used out of this. It's so pretty. They last all day. I've done looks using just this palette because these, um, these three here, like the bright ones, they're kind of, sorry. I'm hiccuping. Um, they're kind of like in between a satin and a shimmer, so they can be blended out in the crease really nicely. They're really pretty. I love them. So, gorgeous, which made me ask for these two for Christmas, which my boyfriend lovingly gave me. Uh, this is the volume three, and this is my January companion palette. It's on my eyes today. I'm using the this one and this one, and this one on the inner corner. So it's just, it's so pretty. It's so, so pretty so far. I'm really enjoying it. I have a mild obsession with Makeup Forever. I feel like they're the fancy makeup. I really, they're not that far outside the price point of other medium to high-end brands, but I just, I feel like they're so fancy. Like, I feel like a makeup artist whenever I'm using their products. Just like this. This is volume four, I believe. Yes. For. So this is just a nice uh, matte palette. Once I hit some pan on the other ones, it's awesome. So after that, I think we only have duos. So I have these two palettes from Ciate. I have a Olivia Palermo collab. This is the Smoldering Eye Palette. This is really nice. This is something I picked it up when it was on sale and I was like, oh, it's not gonna, we'll try out this, so whatever. This palette is so nice. It's perfect for like mature adult makeup. Like if you want a classy going out smoky eye that you could wear to a red carpet event, you got it right here. You've got like three transition shades, one matte shade to go all over your lid and a bunch of medium smoky lid shades. So do something in the crease, something on the lid and you're good. This, this is such gorgeous, mindless makeup. I love it. Every time I make a look out of this, I'm like, oh my god, this is so pretty, and it just looks so effortlessly pretty. Like, like, like a makeup artist put it on, but also like I'm some kind of magical model, and I just kind of like smudged my eyes, and it looked gorgeous. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to me. So this is the Holiday Collab. This is the Pretty Fun Fearless Volume 2 with Chloe Morello. It's super pretty. Um, I really like this. I haven't really played with it yet because I'm trying to just do my holiday palettes once at a time. They're so nice. But this, this is what I had to buy. It's Ellie. There's an Ellie shade, so I needed it. <laughs> and luckily the rest of the palette also appealed to me and I've got um, a good history with Ciate Shadows. 
really pretty. I've used uh, Renegade on my lids so far, and I think I used something else, but I haven't really dug into it yet, but very happy that I have it. Another gift from my boyfriend, because he goes crazy with gifts for Christmas. Even after all that, he was like, well, I feel like I didn't get you enough. I'm like, you got me plenty. Calm down. It's fine. And then I think I have one more brand. I do. I have one more brand with multiple... Two. Two more brands. I have two BH Cosmetic palettes. Uh, this one is the Pride and Prejudice and Zombies palette, which is actually really nice. Um, I don't pull it out very often. I need to use it more. But I remember using it, and it's, it's pretty good. I got some good looks out of this. Um, they were a little deep at the time, because I hadn't used darker shadows yet. But I think now I'd be really good at getting a nice neutral look out of this. They've got this nice blush and highlight going at the bottom. Also, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. This is a fantastic book and a hilarious movie. You should read them. Especially if you liked Pride and Prejudice, which I did. Then they just cut in extra zombie scenes, and it's just... <laughs> I loved it. This is the Zodiac palette, which I have, I did a first impressions on. Um, I like it so far, but again, this is something on my list of things to try out and do more. I kind of wanted to spend days and just use each little section for each uh, horoscope sign and make a look. So that'll be on my list of things to try out. They're all really pretty. Um, the shades I have used were great and they all swatched really nicely. And then I have one more, one more duo of things. I have the Sephora Pro Warm Palette. Oh, oh, oh. This thing is gorgeous. I love the quality. I loved using this. This is something I'm probably going to pull out again multiple times this year. They're just, they're so pretty. So pretty, so pigmented, so blendable. I, at some point, will probably also grab the cool one. But I have picked up the editorial one. I haven't used it yet. I just kept it, um, I, I just bought it because it was perpetually out of stock. And I was worried I wasn't going to get it if I didn't pick it up. So I picked it up and I set it aside and I haven't had a good time to pull it out and use it yet. This, it's, This was something to make me feel better about the fact that um, the electric palette was being discontinued. Gorgeous pretty colors. I've got so much bright in my collection right now that I don't need to worry as much about that not being there or hitting pan on any of those bright shadows. So, lots of gorgeous things. They did that fun um, transforming shifty top coat type thing. Pretty bright colors. Some neutrals down here. A nice little duochrome. Like, I am so excited to use this when I have letting myself use it. So for now, it's going back in the palette box and I'll put it back in my closet for when I need to pick me up. If I could get it closed. Okay, so put that aside. So now we're getting into the I have one thing from this brand section. So I have one Sephora and Pantone collab. I got the, what is it, watercolor? Pantone Universe Modern Watercolors Palette. I don't fully know how I like this. I picked this up when it was on sale, right around when the Lorac um, brunch palette came out, the, pa the pastels. And these actually showed up really nicely. I do need to pull them out some more and use them. I feel like it's mainly going to be, um, again, a companion palette, something I pull in some of these as pops or shimmer shades with something else but they had more pigmentation than I was expecting. A lot of people said it didn't really show up, but corpse skin, everything shows up. And they, some of them that like didn't show up right away, they built really nicely, they blended out, they stuck to my lids nicely, so things I need to use more. Uh, let's see what else I have. Ooh, we'll do these. I have my one Balm palette. This is from Balm Cosmetics in the Balm of Your Hand, volume one. So it's got all of these kind of staple shades like Hot Mama, Bahama Mama, Mary Luminizer, um, singles from some other ones. These are really, really nice. I love these blushes. And altogether, it makes a really nice travel palette because you've got, you can use this as a transition shade. You've got some nice lid shades. It's very pretty. And then over here, 
got two little cream things and I really appreciate the separated flap so that your powders don't get in your creams and mess with everything. I really like this. Um, I don't know how I feel about the volume two. I don't know yet. I haven't decided if I'm buying it at this point, probably not if I haven't grabbed it by now. Then I have one colored rain palette. This is the queen of hearts. It's super pretty. I did also do a first impressions on this and it's gorgeous. I've pulled it out a couple more times and they're lovely. They're so nice. So I think part of my plan is once I hit, um, finish up some shades in the Lorac Pro Matte, I think I'm going to pull in like Air and uh, Princess to fill in the void because I'm going to get pretty used to having those two types of shades in my makeup and I have duplicates. And they can also pull in some of the shimmers and some other stuff. It's This is a really, really nice palette. Love it. It's so pretty. I have this one palette from Huda Beauty. This is the Electric Obsessions. If I could get it open. Really, really pretty. Again, I like to try bright shades if I can. Like if they have something coming out and they have a brights version, I'll probably grab it just because they're harder to formulate and I like to test them out because if they can do these nicely, they can do neutrals really well. And I did really like this. I would like to use these more often. They're really, really pretty. Ooh. This is a fancy palette. This is from Neve Cosmetics. It is the duochrome palette. These things are huge. I had to do this uh, through a separate person to get, um, I had to have a package forwarding service to do this because they don't ship to the United States, which is unfortunate because I love a lot of their stuff. Like, I know I like your formula now. You have a whole, you came out with a duochrome palette, like a whole palette full of huge pans of duochrome and they're gorgeous and I love them and I keep saying you put up more things and I would really like you to just ship them to the United States so I don't have to spend an extra $30, $40 paying somebody else to buy it and ship it to me. I would like to give you my money directly, Neves Cosmetics, please. <sighs> you know, I've been talking too long when I start just jibber jabbering. Oh, oh, I lied. I thought I was done with my duplicates. I have two palettes from Cleona Cosmetics. I have the Paleo palette, which is gorgeous. They're really, really pigmented, really beautiful. They're actually curated really well. Um, and these duochromes. These duochromes are really, really nice. And I like them a lot. Which is why I went and I bought a whole duochrome palette. This is the Alchemy in their Alchemy vs. Witchcraft palette. And... They're so pretty. They're so pretty. I am working on a detailed review on this right now. I can't remember how many shades I've actually gotten done, so I need to do some research and figure out what ones I still have to film on my face. But they're all gorgeous. They blend out nicely. It's just, it's super, super nice. Super pigmented. And honestly, not that bad of a price for the volume you're getting. At least for indie brands. Let's get into some other ones. I have one ColourPop palette. I would like to get more, but again, it's one of those things where it's not pressing. That It's nothing I don't already have. So I would like to get more, but right now all I have is the From Rosa collab She palette. Really, really pretty, really nice shades. Um, I wish they did more mattes, but the shimmers are gorgeous as well. Really, really pretty, makes some nice peachy shades. I have one. Sugar Pill Palette. This is the Feline Fancy Palette. I believe this they stopped making, but they released them all as singles, so I would really suggest getting Text Me. It's a really, really nice transition shade. Or Kiss Kiss. It's a really strong uh, duochrome, like a blood red with an orange shift. Or Seal with a Kiss is one of those, you know, peachy pink duochromes. Wink's a gorgeous highlight, like gorgeous all around. I like them. And I have this with a gift last year from my boyfriend. This is the NARS um, Give In Take palette. Yeah, dual intensity eye and cheek palette. It's a collab with Sarah Moon. Really, really nice neutrals. Very, very pretty. Um, I need to use this more. I really do. So that's another thing I would like to pull out further into my panning journey. Uh, ooh, I have one. Juvia's Place palette. This is the Magic palette. It is huge and really, really pretty. Um, I feel like these are some shades I could still get away with 
well, using one or two as neutrals. Like, I could probably wear this one. I could probably get the pinks in there. I could definitely use the silvers. I could potentially get away with that in a professional, maybe, maybe. But yeah, really, really pigmented, gorgeous. I love this palette. And we're getting into the last couple ones. Um, I have, I'm saving my favorite for last. This is the Dose of Colors Eyes Cream Palette. I don't know if they've brought this back yet. I know they were intending to. I don't know if they did and they stopped or if it's still available. This was a birthday present from my mom last year. And really, really pretty. I particularly love this matte lavender shade. Very, very pigmented. It's got a nice mint. Really, really nice. Um, I kind of wish Hot Fudge was a little deeper so I could really like deepen out the corner but I could just use one of my various blacks from every other palette that people make and I'd be fine. So this is really nice. I like the Dose of Colors formula. And then I have one Morphe palette. This is the Kathleen Lights collab from last fall, last holiday. Gorgeous neutrals. Um, this is a great travel palette as well. It's got a nice matte cream shade, several transitions, several lid shades. You can go pop of color, you can go fully neutral. It's got a nice matte black. I really, really like this. So despite all of the hatred for Morphe, I don't know how I feel about them as a brand, but their formula is really nice. So I will probably at some point pick up more Morphe palettes. And then, I'm still so happy about this palette. This is the Natasha Denona Lila palette. It is absolutely gorgeous. This is most likely going to be my February companion palette just because I would love to pull out these pinks again, these nice duochrome shades, and I think it would be really nice to do it for my birthday month because my birthday is in February. Um, this was a gift for our one year monogamy anniversary with my boyfriend. We have a lot of anniversaries. Just He lets me kind of say, hey, do you want to celebrate this thing? He's like, sure, fine. And then we have to get around to actually celebrate. He's like, oh my god, why did I agree to another anniversary? So he got me this lovely palette. It's amazing. I'm obsessed with it. I have to put it down because otherwise this will just be like the only thing I use for like three months. So I'm most likely going to use that for my February. So these are all of my eyeshadow palettes, I believe. Oh, nope. I lied. Forgot NYX. I have these two perfect filter. Oh, I have a perfect filter and an Avant Pop palette from NYX. So this is, ooh, I like this one. This is a really nice uh, cool toned type neutral shade. It has a dupe for the chrome shade that I loved in the Lorac Pro 2. So nice, need to use more. And then this is the Avant Pop, which I should also probably use more of. It's got this really nice transition shade, and a little brown, some peaches. Um, and I think this is the same shade that was in there because it also seems like a dupe of the chrome shade that I like. So, another one. I really like both of these. I've made looks. I really like both of them. Okay, so now that should be all of the palettes. Looking at the destruction around me, that's all the palettes. Uh, thanks for sitting through all of this. Hopefully this helped you get an idea of what kind of makeup I go for. Uh, let me know if you'd like to see me. <sighs> Sorry. I'm getting emails popping up on my screen. Let's do that again. Hopefully this helped you get a better idea of what I have. If you'd like to see some reviews or some looks or tutorials with one of these palettes, just let me know. Um, also, if you'd like to see one of them as my one month, one palette companion to my panning, let me know in the comments. I will try and dig it out and use it. I like almost all of these to varying degrees. I like love some of them and I like, I really like some of them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I tend to get carried away with limited edition products because I feel the anxiety of missing out on them, which I'm working on. Um, I do at some point want to get the rest of some other stuff like, again, I'm panning the Lorac Pro Mattes so that I don't feel as guilty when I grab the Pro 1. Fewer duplicates type thing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my eyeshadow palette collection. Uh, the rest of them should be a lot shorter. Thanks for suffering through all of this ridiculousness. Uh, if you'd like to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.
Turns out we're not quite done. I want to show you how I kept my palette. So this is the space I do my makeup. My brushes are still drying from last night. Um, I keep like my Natasha Denona right there, some single shadows in a magnetic palette, my two pan that palettes, my palette of the month. Over here I have anything that's new or I'm still trying to um, test out. I'll keep it over here until I have a formed opinion on it. So that's got the new Chloe Morel, Makeup Forever. Um, I'm finishing up on the Alchemist palette and the Naked Smoky. And then some more single shadows in this magnetic palette. And then this is the huge wardrobe thing where I keep most of my makeup. I, I was attended when I bought this. Somebody was watching me and still allowed me to buy it. But I got it from Ikea when I was going in for Alex stores, and I just instead bought a huge wardrobe for my makeup. But this is the shelf where I keep all of my palettes that I'm not currently using. Um, I tried to keep them together by uh, brand. And then I have a couple up here. That's that um, holiday thing from last year that just they just don't fit very well anywhere. Any weird shaped palettes or tiny ones go on the edge. So that's how I keep my eyeshadow palettes. So, now we're done. Thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know if you want me to do single shadows or lipstick, blush, highlight, whatever you want me to do next. And I'll see you next time.